Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am in the studio today working on the elocutionist. If you are just joining me for the very first time, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video, you'll give me a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button and then hit the little bell if you want to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. So today I'm going to be working on the elocutionist. I started this a few days ago and I did start a playlist because if you've been watching me, I usually have multiple projects going at the same time because I like a variety. So I bounce around um, from one to the other in any given. It could take me months to get a, a journal finished. So I create a playlist for each project so that way you can either just wait and binge watch it from beginning to end or um, at least find where you left off and kind of keep everything together. So this uh, project was a book cover, an old book from the 1800s that had a really damaged spine. So I took it apart and decided I wanted to try creating uh, pages that were just a single page because you can't always find big enough paper to fold in half for the size of your book cover. So I was playing around in the last video with um, trying to figure out how to do this based on watching someone else who did hinges. It didn't work out for me for that, but I ended up making more like piano hinges, which is one big piece of tape. And that worked, and I wanted to leave my spine open because I liked seeing the edges of the pages. And so I wanted to figure out a way where I could have a minimal spine that would hold everything together, but that it would leave everything exposed. So I used some of the bits that had fallen off of the original spine, um, just because I liked how grungy they were, and um, went ahead and used some of my rusted fabric and just did it that way. And it's 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 working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on finishing the insides of this one. I think I showed each page as I went through so that you could kind of see, I just used a variety of old things. Now, one thing um, that I do want to mention for pages that are thinner, if you did watch that one, all of these tape strips were made from the actual digital kit that I had printed out um, just because I liked the different patterns on them and I used them in the book. Now, this digital kit came from uh, Roxy Creations and I will put a link down below. I ended up buying two more in the same family of kits um, because I just love those papers and I wanted to have uh, more of a variety. So th this is her, I had first purchased her French Chateau journal pages two, I think, and then realized, well, if it's two, there must be a one. And so I went back and purchased the one and then there was also an embellishments kit. So I, I have all three of those now. So I just mentioned that because they're beautiful papers. I used um, sample wallpaper, a wallpaper sample book that I have some um, pages out of. And I'm gonna be putting together some kits of um, scraps and papers and different things like this um, that I can share uh, in with some bundles that I'm doing. So those are to come in the future. Um, but I did use some wallpaper, um, some of her digitals that I printed on tea stain paper, and then just some old book pages and different things. So the old book pages, I think how thick the um, the tape tape that I made was is a little thick for how thin these pages are as far as them folding over. So I keep kind of going back and trying to flatten them. And I think over time they'll, you know, get more worked in. But I'm I'm worried that you know this hinge is thicker than the paper and it could it could just kind of make the paper want to tear. So I think in the future I would use either thinner paper for my making my tape or use washi tape and glue it down so that it's you know stickier than normal washi tape. Um, but I, I really like how it turned out. So I'm gonna start, I'm just kind of starting to decorate some. I'm not gonna do I think every page. I want to leave a lot of writing space. So every page that I do something, I want to add in writer writing space if I'm covering it up. I've started to do a little bit, and it kind of uh, created another little tutorial that I wanted to share. This idea, actually, I'm, I'm kind of doing a mashup. So it, it the idea came from Tracy Fox. About a month ago, she posted a video on printing on envelopes. 
And I thought that was a wonderful idea. I have a ton of envelopes I need to use up and it just kind of makes it faster to decorate them. So I want to share with you what I have done in my journal as far as using some envelopes and different things. And then I'm just gonna kind of continue playing a little bit. Like I said, I have um, this huge pile of tea stained envelopes that I've already stained. And I wanted to point those out because I had never tea stained envelopes before. So I keep a little bin. Um, these are like eight and a half by 11 size and they're probably, I don't know, inch and a half or so thick. I keep these with different kinds of paper and tea stain paper and painted paper and that sort of thing. But when they get full, I need to use them up because I don't let myself collect more than I can fit in one of those bins. So I wanted to share with you how you, to tea stain envelopes. There's a couple of ways you can do it. If you tea stain paper in the oven, you need to remove the little acetate windows out of the window envelopes before you do it because if you heat it up, it's just gonna shrivel up and then your envelope's gonna be all curled up like this. So take those out ahead of time. Um, I try to be careful when I do, sometimes I get a little tear. Some of them, I actually just go ahead and open the envelope. It's easier because you can always just glue it back closed. So take all your acetate, the little windows out, and then you can do them in the oven. Otherwise, you just want to, if you wanna leave the little window in, then you can um, just lay them out and let them dry naturally. Uh, and then they'll, you can kind of preserve the window. So I have a whole bunch of envelopes that I need to use. And because there's so many, I thought a quicker way to maybe do that would be to print them. And so since Tracy had um, done this great video, I'll put a link down below so you can watch hers if you want. It's about 20 minutes long, but it's super easy. So I'm using a, a Mac computer and then an Epson EchoTank printer. So it, as long as you have a color printer, it doesn't really matter. Most printers print envelopes anyway, so it's not a big deal. So um, what you need to do though, is they're all different sizes. So you take your envelope and I used, because I, I loved these papers um, I and they're very collagey, I just wanted to use some of these papers for my envelopes because then I know all the colors and everything in it, this journal is going to be really colorful and it's all going to go together. You can do anything you want. I think map would be really pretty. You can just, you know, do like a map page, um, text, old paper. You know, you may have other digitals or have book page you want to scan something that you can then just print it from your computer. So because I was using these from Rachel, I decided I would just take maybe a section because my envelope, you know, is, is small. I didn't want things to be too distorted. And these are eight and a half by 11. I think hers came, they did come A4 size. And Tracy Fox, her digitals also come A4 size. The maps that I did, they also come A4 size. So if you're in the, in the United States, you have to adjust to fit your eight and a half by 11 paper. So there's different ways. That's kind of a whole other subject that maybe I'll talk about at some point. But for this, like I said, I just wanted to take maybe a section of the paper. So what I did was take your digital and make a duplicate on your computer before you print it. Because once you make any change to your original, you've changed it. So I took my page and then I just like eyeballed cropping what I thought would be a similar proportion to the envelope I was gonna print. So I have my new file with this digital, the, the copy, and I'm cropping out maybe just this part, okay, with its new name, envelope, whatever the dimensions are. Okay, so then that way I have those for later on if I have another envelope this size. This particular envelope that I used, I had a bunch of them because they were, those return envelopes to send your payment in that you get with like a mortgage payment or you know whatever, some kind of monthly payment. They'll send you a whole pack of these, a dozen at the beginning of every year. So I always have a bunch of these because I pay it online. So I thought, well, I'm gonna use them. It's great because they don't have a lot of writing or anything on them. And I thought rather than cover this up, which you can do, and I think I did a sample somewhere, not in one of these little ones, in a bigger one, where you can just, if you don't want to see the, these parts, go ahead and um, glue another piece of tea stained paper or whatever you have over that. 
and then that way when it prints you won't have to cover any of this up after it'll be under you know your printing will be over that so it just depends on what you want to do I had another idea about this, so I'll, I'll show you kind of what I, I ended up doing. So this envelope, obviously it's tea stained, so it's really kind of wonky, and it's unglued because I had taken the little window out. So before you print, you wanna make sure it's all glued glued back like an envelope. You don't have to glue the flap shut because your printer will, it'll print one that has the flap open. So just make sure you iron it really flat and have all these other parts glued glued down so I would have to iron this one before I did it okay so I have my in the computer I have my cropped piece and I have it to measured to the size that I need for my envelope so this envelope is three and a half wide by I think six inches okay so I have in my cropped piece I have adjusted the size um, for uh, the Mac, you go into, um, when you're in preview, to look at your picture, you're, you go to tools and then go down to adjust size. And then you're just gonna uh, make this the size that you your envelope is, okay? Now that you have that done, then you wanna print it. So to print it, you're going to go down to print, but then you need to create, your printer may not have a choice of an envelope that's already this size. So you down at the very bottom, it says manage custom sizes. You click on that and it'll bring a little screen over to the left um, that says untitled. And you're gonna create your own envelope size. So if you double click up there, you'll get, you can give it a name, just like you did with a file name. So you just name it whatever envelope size it is. And then you'll jump over and you'll see where you click in the dimensions. So I did my dimensions, what it was, and then I even tried doing it a little bigger so it might would print borderless, like I could fake it out, that doesn't work. So just go ahead and, and know that there's gonna be a little border around it, um, You make it your size, and then I had like all the margins at zero. Uh, and then click okay, and now you'll have saved that envelope size for future. Okay, so when you print it, when you print this out on mine, I even tried flipping it. On my printer tells me to print it with the flap open on this side, but regardless of where I have it in my on my screen, it wants to print the opposite. So you might do a test on plain paper just to see which direction you actually need to put your envelope in. If it matters to you, like if there's writing on it and you need the top to be on the top, then you'll wanna pay attention to that. This particular pattern I did, didn't really matter, it could go either way. So just maybe do a test on plain paper before you ruin your envelope. And then I print it on both sides because I'm not sure on each of these how I'll end up using them. So I just went ahead and print them because some of them, maybe I'm gonna glue them down this way and have it be a pocket this way, you know. Um, and I've done a couple of different things in my journal. So then the next step that I needed to do for my envelope is I needed to put a window back in. I could leave it open, you know, like this one has a window and I haven't put anything in it yet. Um, and you could leave it open. It printed through all the way. Um, but if you're going to put something inside of this, you know, then you'll see it. You'll see it peeking through there, which is okay. But it might help it go in and out, you know, not get caught if you put a, put a window back in there. So for windows, if you, you know, you may have done this before, you can use acetate of any kind, these little, you know, these little bags that you save. Um, you can cut a piece of that and put in there. Um, if you want to border it on the outside, you can glue it from the outside and then have another, you know, cover up your edge. I glued mine from the inside just so, just because. You could also use this kind of thing if you want it to be really thick. This is just like the lid to a card box, um, but that would make a really nice sturdy one too. So just something clear, um, but then I decided to kind of switch it up and do something a little bit different. And I wanted to emboss my window because all of these papers are really kind of, you know, they're French chateau and there's like, lacy patterns and wallpaper patterns and frilly patterns and that sort of thing. So I kind of thought, well, it'd be fun to do a different window in there since I have to put one in anyway. 
Um, so I decided to use, um, the first thing I tried was to just use acetate. And I think depending on the pattern or what you're seeing through it, maybe you would see the pattern. But because it's clear, all it does is kind of look a little lumpy to me. So I'm gonna show you the, um, the embossing folder that I use. I only have like four embossing folders to my name right now. Um, I'm really new to all this. So I just, you know, have some very basic ones. And the one that I love is this one that looks like old, you know, kind of old flocked wallpaper. Um, I'll put the link down below. It's called, it has a name on it, Damask. So it's like Damask fabric. And it's the one that I used um, on my jelly plate when I did this, these wallpaper, the wallpaper pack. So I have this paper, a paper pack done with all my gel plate prints in a digital kit. So I'll put a link to that below too, because I think this is going to be maybe my next one I work on. I don't know that I'll be able to part with this to sell it because I love this cover, but I am in the process of making another one. Um, and I'll probably do some kind of decorative cover, but this one is with my fresco finish papers and the wallpaper papers. And I think it would look great with Rachel's papers. So I'm going to probably include some of those um, and do one that maybe I'll sell. So we'll see. That's that's going to be um, next in line, I think. So back to my windows. I did some experimenting. I didn't like just the clear acetate. So I thought about using vellum. And that's what I ended up doing. So just like embossing with anything, um, different papers handle differently in depending on, you know, the actual uh, embossing folder that you have. Your paper could break. So I knew that. And so the first time I did it, and I don't have the sample anymore, I don't think. The first time I did it, I spritzed it with water. And I, I actually, this one I sandwiched in between paper just because I've embossed on vellum before and I know how it can break. So I thought, well, I need some padding, some kind of cushion. So I I spritzed the paper and put it on here. And for whatever reason, when I went to take it off, it stuck to my uh, to my vellum. So that didn't work at all. So then I just tried sandwiching it between and leaving it dry. Um, I sandwiched it between the acetate, which I think I kind of liked. I sandwiched it between baking paper. I didn't want anything too thick because sometimes it almost makes the imprint look a little blurred, if that makes sense. Um, like it kind of shifted and moved in the folder when you ran it through. I think this one kind of looks like that a little bit. But I found what worked you know, pretty well too was just because I cut these into pieces, my vellum was eight and a half by 11. I just kind of cut them into quarters and put the whole stack in there and did them together. So that, that seemed to work, and then I did a whole bunch at once. I did get a few little cracks here and there, but nothing nothing too bad. Um, and I really, I can't get it wet because you saw how it curled up. So I've done a bunch to have because I think I'm going to do a bunch of those envelopes. And then the other thing that I did to kind of make that pattern hot, um, stand out a bit, because it's kind of just, you know, white and plain right now. And you could leave it that way because it does show up but I kind of liked um, using some uh, Distress Oxide in Vintage Photo, this one. And you can use any color that you want. You might want it to be turquoise or, you know, whatever. Um, just to kind of highlight that and kind of give it another little dimension and kind of show the pattern a little bit more. So that's what I did. Um, I just kind of measured, uh, leaving a little quarter inch around the whole thing, and then just cut my pieces so that I could put a little um, glue right around the edge and then just gently slipped it in there. So it's just, it's just glued right around the edge there. And then that way you don't have anything sticking up, you know, that's gonna catch. When you let that dry, you wanna just kind of make sure you, in case a little bit of glue got on anywhere else that you don't glue your envelope together. So you just kind of check it while it dries that it's all completely open again. So I did that and then I decided, so this one I haven't finished decorating yet. So this was again, another just little part that I cropped 
and then did the back side again, not knowing what I was going to do with them. But I just, I just think they're so cute. They'd be really cute. Tracy had mentioned, you know, for Happy Mail, you could just put your mailing label, you know, over the top or something to actually send it. But um, I just think they're super cute. So I ended up, I'm going to show you what I've started in here so far with my playing. So one of these um, I had done was actually a larger envelope, a larger window envelope. And I had cut it in half already. So I just um, made a little notch. I have my little vellum in there, you can see. And then this one, uh, the back side, you could see through was not attractive. So I actually just backed this whole little pocket with a piece of book page and uh, just then just glued it right to my book. And then I have now a little pocket there, kind of like a library card pocket would be in a book. So I've just stuck that there. And as far as just decorating the rest of my envelope, because again, I, I didn't cover anything before I printed it, where it said on mine, you know, it'll say, you know, place stamp here and then have these little marks and then who it's from. So I just went ahead and I have a whole bunch of vintage stamps. Um, I have my little tray here that I've just been digging through to find one, you know, that I like the right colors or whatever. And um, glued a little stamp on there, just aged it up a little bit. And then just to kind of, you know, I had those lines there, which are fine. I could have put a sticker over that or done anything. But I had these, I remembered I had these, these little stamps. These I've had forever. These are Cavallini Paper is the company. But they have, you know, I have a bunch of different ones, birds, butterflies. And this one was all Paris. So I thought it was perfect. So I have this stamp that has a little address on it. And then just like your little canceled mail with the Eiffel Tower. So I used that little stamp just to kind of give it another little decoration. So it just made a super cute little pocket. And then this little card I haven't done much to. This is, I'm trying to think of, you know, little things that I already had that I could just use. And these were all little Tim Holtz pre-cut cards that you just buy in a pack. And there's a couple different sizes. They already have the little rounded corners. There's square ones, you know, little credit card size kind of, and then and then this size. So I am just kind of using those because all I needed to do was, I could decorate. I think I might, you know, add some little flowers or things to it. I did also get, um, as I was finding, you know, I'm always com not complaining, but saying I really don't have a lot of stuff. I really don't. And if you've been watching me, you know, I'm I, on the journals that I've been making, I've been trying to make my own papers, my own embellishments, and then do kits. But I'm just learning all that stuff, and it's really taking a lot of time. So I, I thought I'm just going to buy some of um, Rachel's flowers. She had these cute ones. So I just bought her. She has a little kit, and I'll add that, you know, link that down below, too. And then I got one from Tracy Fox too. And then, and then I got maps from Bohemian Crafting. They're all some of my favorites that I watch. So I really wanted to, you know, support them. And they've been doing this a lot longer and actually know what they're doing. So I just found these cute flowers. And then I just, you know, printed them on tea stain paper. So they would already be kind of have a different texture to the paper. And then I just tore them out. Um, and then I'll just, you know, like I can, I can age them, but like that would be cute there or, you know, a different one, whatever, you know, just to add something and maybe a little sentiment or something like that. So I'll play around and maybe add some things, but for right now, I'm just kind of trying to get the basics in. And then I like that you can write on that side. So that will go there. And then what else have I done? I started to do something here. You can see this is that piece that I used to make that envelope. I don't want to cover everything up too much, you know, because it's kind of fun to go back and play in it from time to time. And like I said, I don't know if I'm going to sell this one or not. This page was one of my wallpaper pages. And it, you know, you could have written on it, but I just, I wanted to do some decorating and this is definitely a, a page to leave for writing. So I, I took one of the pictures that was on, you know, one of these papers, you can just, there's just different elements here or there that you can cut things out. And I should say that these were A4, like I said, 
You have to, when you purchase these digital kits, if you're a, a beginner, if you don't have A4 paper at home to print them on, I mean, your printer, if you're in the U.S., will print on A4 paper, but maybe you don't have that, you know, is if you want to do it on 8.5 by 11 because that's what you have the most, you can just change the size in, in your tools. You know, again, I work on a Mac, so if I click on a picture, um, it takes me to preview. I go up to tools and then adjust size, and then you can adjust the size of your picture. Now, having said that, I'm going to point something out because I had this issue. Well, one thing is it'll change the scale because A4 paper is a little bit narrower and a little bit wider, longer. So when you, you know, change those dimensions, it's going to distort your picture. In a lot of things, it doesn't really matter. Like these, I didn't, I didn't mind any of them, um, how it distorted it. These were all in 300 DPI, so they're really good quality. So changing that size did not pixelate anything or, you know, change it. The quality was still really good. And then, like I said, I printed these all on tea stain paper in a high quality um, just because I wanted, you know, the color to be good and the, the clarity to be good. And I think this one, oh, just to compare, I'll show you. Um, if you're new like me and you haven't done digital things before, I'm just learning all this. Oh, this is not the same one. I need it. I need apples and apples here. I printed this one on, um, and this one too. I printed a couple on my Epson paper, the really good quality paper, just to compare so you, you can see. So this is Epson's really good quality paper. The detail and the clarity and the color, you know, is this is the best. But this is still really good too. This is on tea stain paper with just, uh, I did, did go ahead and do high quality, but just as if my paper were bright white plain paper, even though it's tea stain, that's the selection that I made. So you, you don't, depending on what you're gonna use them for, you don't need to, you know, spend the ink to print them on the highest quality, best paper thing, you know. Um, so I just did this on cheap copy paper that was tea stain. So that is one thing. But I have to say for these maps, which I will also be using, those were also A4. And those I had kind of an issue with. I was not, it says they're 300 DPI, but when you go into preview and you, you go into tools and click on... Um, change size, you'll see that they're 72, they're not 300. And so what happens is if you go ahead and print it in the size that it is, and also they're like huge sized, I have mine in inches and it was like 40 something by 30 something. So what your picture is on your screen is not what it actually is, if that makes sense. So if I changed the size to eight and a half by 11, at that 72 quality, it's all pixelated. It does not print well. So for hers, don't change the size, just select the paper size that you want. And I did mine um, because I wanna do them borderless. I do mine through Epson Plus because I have that Epson EchoTank printer. If you do it through their driver, you have to have downloaded all that. Um, and I know I'm getting into the weeds here, but you know, if you're new like me, it's disappointing when you buy something and then you go to print it and you don't know that you can't just change the size without it distorting your picture. And so far, all these kits that I've bought are A4 size. So just know that, you know, you're going to have to fit it to your 8.5 by 11 when you print it. So you'll, you'll put um, like fit to the size of my page kind of selection. And then it should print okay. Uh, you just don't want to change the size because it'll change the quality of this one. So I'll put that link below. She, it's it's really, they're nice maps, but it's just a little limited on what you can do with the size. So back to my page. Uh, where was I? Okay, so I printed her out. When I talk about distorting the size, I have her again in somewhere else in a card or something that I printed. So I'll show you the size to compare um, just how, you know, when you've changed something, it, it might change the shape. So you could see here, it's the same girl, but you can see how she looks different. 
just because her size has been um, distorted. You know, it's not a huge deal in most cases, but just be aware of that as you're playing around with your sizing and printing. So for this one, she was part of a collage paper and I just cut her out. And then um, I think, did I back her? I did add a thickness because I was just gonna have her be like a corner, a tuck kind of thing. I did uh, use some old book page just to make it a little thicker. And then I just did a little zigzag stitch around the edge. And I've mentioned this before when my zigzag stitch doesn't show up really well because of the color thread I had in there. I just use my distressed um, oxides or inks, whatever, and just run that over it to dirty up. And again, the edge, you know, and doing the little corners with my little We Are Memory Keepers corner punch that I always use. And then for this envelope, what did I put inside this one? Oh, for this one, I just trimmed down one of those Tim Holtz cards that was already done. And that made that quick and easy just to put something inside. Another place to write. And then again, I put the little um, stamp for the location and then that little stamp and then just another little stamp. So it's still, you know, it's obviously an envelope, but it's a cuter envelope. And then another one of the Tim Holtz little cards. And then I just added some uh, vintage lace and some of this uh, little stuff that I had ripped off that ruffled lace a few days ago. So just a little tuck there. And then this page, um, I found another little picture in um, Rachel's collection that I liked and just cut that out. And then I decided I, I wanted it to just be like a little floppy tuck. So again, I made it thicker with some book page and then stitched this one just a couple of rounds, um, straight stitch, you know, inked my edges and corners. And then I used this little piece came from another kit that I, I can't remember. It starts with an M. I'm not going to remember the name. It's like Mandragon or something like that. I'll put a link down below. As I was searching around for little fussy cut things, I found this other one that was a whole sheet of I've got another one that I haven't cut out yet. It was a whole sheet of just like little label kind of things like this. And it, 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 I think there's four pages. So it's all in its original colors. And then it's in kind of this sepia color and kind of a black and white color. There were like three other colors where she had just adjusted the coloration of it. So I've only cut up the little colored one so far. But um, I just took a little one that was kind of an address and plopped it on there with some of this really cute fabric um, that I might use on a book cover. So just some scraps of this. I'm also going to be putting together bundles of um, some small pieces like this of some different fabrics that I have. I've sold a few in like larger pieces that you could um, cover a book with and I'll still do that too. But I'm going to do some packets of smaller pieces that have a variety in them. So that's what that is, just a little piece of that pretty fabric um, just to layer on there. And then again, I wanted to put another little letter in here. I think I'm gonna use this one. And I did the same thing, a little stamp and another little stamp, but I need to, I think that's where I decided to turn the camera on. So I kind of want to dirty this up a little bit. And then I do want to put another little, decorate some of these other little envelopes. So I just, these are all from that same little kit that I cut up, but I just want to, you know, put the little address there. And I think that's cute. Just to kind of make it look more decorative then. And I could put a little piece of fabric or something behind that too. That would be cute. Now that I've put glue on it already, or a piece of, paper of some kind too. Let's see. What do I have laying on my table? Let's see. That's kind of cute. That's just a little piece of that book binding. No, oh, maybe a little piece of that. Let's see if I can. Or another something, something. That's kind of cute. Okay, I think I'll do this. So first, because I haven't ironed this, I need to find a flat 
sort of flat spot or make a flat spot. Uh oh. There, that's cute. Okay. Make sure that's gonna stick since my glue. I'm hoping to get out and get a walk today. I don't know what it's been like where everybody else is, but we're way into April and we got snow again. We didn't get it at our house. It rained kind of off and on all day yesterday, last couple of days. But it's like every other day, it's either been windy with storms coming in or out, or we did get a little snow, just really cold, rainy. They got snow at 6,000 feet, and we're at 5,300 feet. So you could see just, just up behind us, I can see the snow line. But today... Today, it's probably cold, but I don't mind. I can bundle up, but it's at least clear and not raining out. Yeah, it's kind of cute. Another little, another little one. So then I need something to put inside of this one. Oh, I have this here. So I just kind of pulled out um, another little bin that I keep is my coffee and tea stain paper and one with just oddball lined papers. So this is just out of a check register I didn't use. So I have it tea stained. So that's just another little writing spot there. And I think that's as far as I got so far. I was working on um, making, I think I want to put a map since I was printing these out. So I've spent the last couple of days because I had bought these digital kits and then I hadn't even printed them out yet, is just printing out um, some different things so I know what I have. I need to kind of get organized and start a bin of, uh, or a file folder or something of digital things. So I don't know where I'll put this. But I was thinking of, you know, like maybe in the back of a book, they have like a map that folds out. That might be kind of cute there. Or do I want it on the very back of the book? That's kind of cute, but then it covers up him, which I actually don't mind. So maybe I do like that. I could glue that down. And then it's just a fold out and you can write on all this or I could leave that as a pocket there that's even a better idea so if I just glue it on those sides then it's st still a pocket for some little tuck of some kind so I think I'll do that I'm not even going to reinforce it so it's kind of fun in a way I have to say to buy some digitals from other people because it it's, saves me time. I feel like I can actually get to decorating something instead of always, you know, having to make everything. Which, there's nothing wrong with that either. I still, I don't want to cover him up. I still like, you know, doing that, the challenge of it. And it makes me learn my more um, software program kind of things, you know. I always like learning new things, keep my brain working. Didn't get that on very straight, did I? I'm gonna go at it again. And then I might need to reinforce it with tape, I think. I don't know, we'll see. I know, I can't believe it's already gonna be May very soon. I started doing this whole paper craft, whatever you wanna call it, book arts thing in May 
the year of COVID, so May 2020. So it's going to be two years next month that I have been playing with this stuff. It seems like a long time, and then it doesn't, you know. I mean, when I look at how many videos, my husband's just always blown away. He's like, how many videos have you done? <laughs> I, did, <clears throat> I didn't start my channel until August. And I had no intention of starting a channel. I just, I have a Facebook page, and I was always sharing my stuff there. And when I did this, there was really no good way to make anyone understand what it was I was doing without actually, you know... I could have put a gusset on that would have been smart because then I could really fit something bigger in there. But it's more of like a secret little spot, I think, you know. You can have something sticking out like that and then you know it's there. So another little envelope. So that's kind of cute. So I'm going to be doing more of these. Like this, this one, I have another one. That's kind of cute there. I thought I had another one started and not finished. The other thing I got was, let's see, oh, here it is. Oopsie. I think it was this one. I was going to put that there and then find a stamp. I think this one, where's my roundy corner thingy? Uh-oh, that was not good. You always have to make sure you get the little bits out or it kind of makes it, cuts it crooked. The other thing that I am making, and I'll talk about it a little bit more, I think, later. I'll actually do a video of it, is all this with the slow stitching, you know, I... I did the fabric quilt kits, which I sold the original eight that I did and had requests for more. So I made four more. That was all I could do out of the material that I had. I do have some more of those squares, but some of the other stuff I was running out of. Um, I'll have to put together a little bit different one and take new pictures is the problem. Um, but putting those together to share, you know, parts and pieces it's made me kind of think about all the other stuff that I have, you know, that I'm, papers that I use and different things. Because I'm not going to, you know, some of them I'm not going to use at all. But then the other thing is I'm on these Facebook groups for beginner people because I'm a beginner too. And I really try to gear my videos to beginners because I know how daunting it can be. And everything's new. If you've never done paper thing, you don't even know what's out there. And and tools and just everything about it there's just you know it's you want to do it and you want to learn it but it's um it can seem like a lot so i've put together this morning some paper um different papers that i use um that i mention in my videos that you know someone who doesn't do this kind of stuff may not even know what they are or think about the different things that you could use so I'm starting to put together some packs of um, a sample pack kind of thing. And then I'll do, um, I'll do some uh, fun, kind of fun, I like that one, some kind of fun things. Um, you know, fun papers and stuff like that and tea stain papers and, you know, just for beginners who, who don't have anything and they're just starting out and they don't want to, like, you know, buy everything at once or don't know what to get or don't know what they're going to like or what they're going to use. So I'm going to put together just some little kind of share share packs. So that way if I mention something and you just want to try it out without buying, you know, 500 sheets of something or 100 sheets or whatever of, you know, 10 different kinds of paper that you'll have some to just play around with. So I'll be getting those together in the next couple of days I think so that one and 
then my stamp. Where'd my stamp go? add stickers you could add flower you know you could do it you don't have to keep it looking like an envelope but I just thought it was kind of fun to look like an envelope these were the other things that I also got these were from Tracy Fox um, and I haven't printed out everything that I got from her but um, I she had some botanical things too and, and I just kind of like they're like from vintage book looking botanicals uh, so I thought those would be kind of fun too, just to use as little cards that one's actually kind of cute in there. Maybe I'll use that. What else do I have here? Different size ones, you know, that she had. So I kind of just, I'm starting to print out a few things since I bought these kits and I want to use them. So I thought I'll get some things to try here. Um, and normally I would round the corners because I... I think they look sweet. And get rid of my white edges. And dirty up the back a little bit, maybe. I'm just using what ink I have. I haven't even dipped this in ink all morning, I don't think. I'm just kind of, I, I want it subtle, just not bright white. And then, you know, I could um, decorate that up more if I want. Just trying to get something in everything, this little corner is poking up. this one gonna go maybe I don't have a home for it yet and maybe it ends up being a you know I glue it down and it flops that way so I'll see maybe this way I don't know I'm just having fun making up a bunch of these so I'm gonna make up things they may go in this book they may end up going in my other one that I haven't started yet. This was another um, another just a little idea. I'm just trying to use up envelopes, and because I I have a whole pile of ones that are even just parts, you know, that are cut that I off cut, where I use part, and I need to make little. But these are cute for you know little corner pockets and corner tucks and that sort of thing. So this one, you know, I could have glued it in this way and have it be just a little, you know, glue that down and have it be a cute little corner pocket, um, you know, or a, a floppy thing. But I, I kind of like the idea that you can just write on it too. So I, so far I've just kind of left it like that. And then it had some ink had bled through. This had a lot of writing on it, so I had to totally cover it up. So I just covered it up with, again, some more little pieces I tore off of Rachel's papers um, and then just added a little piece of lined paper so that it's just kind of a cute little thing and then that could end up being you know tucked in somewhere I need like a little corner thing for it or something or just even paper clip it on it'd be cute so I don't know I'm just kind of playing around it's just so much fun these papers are so pretty that it's really kind of fun to just look through here you know, make myself kind of look for spots for things, you know, just maybe clipper right there would be cute. So that's it. I'm just playing. I'm having fun playing. So I'm going to continue working on this with some music on. I really prefer to work with some music going. So have a great rest of your day and then go make something. Bye.